All right, in this video, we're gonna cover two main topics. We're gonna to cover angular position, and we're also gonna cover angular displacement. Now, before I go any further, I wanna make sure that you understand that when we're talking about angular position and displacement, we're talking about something moving in a circular path. So uh, angular position is where along that circular path is it, and angular displacement would be, well, how far along that circular path has it traveled, okay? So angular position can be measured in two different ways, degrees and radians. We're gonna talk about both of those. You're gonna find out though that radians is really the ones that we're gonna use. So I wanna go in depth on what a radian is. Also, in angular displacement, uh, you're gonna find out that that is essentially just the change in angular position. So how far has it moved from where it started? And the other thing that we're gonna talk about under angular displacement is how can we take angular displacement and translate that into linear motion? So if something is rolling, how far has it moved linearly? Uh, we're gonna go over all of that. But before we get too in depth with all that, there's a few ground rules that we need to make sure that we cover. So there's a few things that you need to know. Let's start off by going over something that we are familiar with. So if we know that something is moving in the x direction, we know that it's moving horizontally, right? So x. So the x direction means something is moving either to the left or to the right. And then we have the y direction. That means something is either moving upwards or downwards. So we've got the x direction left and right, the y direction upwards and downwards. What about the angular position? Uh, what about that? Well, we represent the angular position where something is along a circle with the letter theta, Greek letter theta. And that means it's either moving around a circle this way or that way. Now, another thing that we need to make sure we understand is uh, which way is positive and which way is negative. So on the x direction, our standard notation would be that the left is negative and the right is positive. On the y direction, upwards is positive, downwards is negative. Now with angular position, if we're going counterclockwise, we consider that to be positive, And if we're going clockwise, we consider that to be negative. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. Another thing that's gonna be really important to us is uh, what I call the reference line. So the reference line is where our starting point is on our circle. Now this reference point is always based off of the center of the circle, and it's always horizontal and to the right of the center of the circle. So this line right here represents our reference line. So this would be, for instance, our zero location. This is where everything starts at. Now if something goes a complete rotation around that, in degrees, we know that's gonna be 360 degrees. Or in radians, that's gonna end up being two pi. Now, if you don't understand that right now, don't worry, we're gonna go in depth on it. If you do understand that, there might be some parts of this video you can skip and that'll be cool. So let's first talk about angular position in degrees. Now, angular position in degrees is something that you'll probably be pretty familiar with I won't spend too much time on this, but if we draw our reference line, we know that that's gonna be zero degrees. That's where everything starts at. And let's say that our object has moved upwards to, oh, somewhere around right here. This right here is our theta. That's our angular position. And if I were to measure that in degrees, that looks like it's somewhere about 45 degrees. So it looks like it's at the position 45 degrees on this circle at the moment. Now what if it were to go halfway around the circle all the way to over here? Well that ends up being 180 degrees. And we can actually figure out the location of something on this circle at a lot of different points. What about right here? Well, that theta would end up being 90 degrees. But what if we were right somewhere in the middle of these two? That location would be, well, 135 degrees. And we actually could go around this whole circle and taking it in 45 degree segments and bring it all the way back around. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast. 
So there I got a circle and I've measured all the different degrees along the way. And if it goes one complete rotation, well, we know that's going to be 360 degrees. So this starting point right here would start off as our zero. And if something went all the way around the circle, well, then we would say it went 360 degrees. If it went all the way around and then back up to this 45 point right here again, it would be 360 plus 45. And, um, or you could just say 45. One way or the other, it doesn't really matter. But angular position in degrees is pretty simple, but like I said earlier, that's not really the proper way to measure angular position on a circle. Now it works, but the standard way to do this would be using the radians. And before I start talking about that, I wanna make sure we understand what a radian is. All right, so what is a radian? Well, I have here a circle drawn and I have my reference line, which happens to be the radius of the circle. So I'm going to make a little R there to represent the radius. And I also happen to have a string here that is cut to be essentially the length of this radius right here. If I were to take this radius and transpose it onto the outer edge of that circle, well, that length right there around the circle would be considered a radian. So I'm gonna make a little mark here to represent one radian. So this length around the circle, if I were to go that far, that would be one radian. And just so you know, the angle for one radian happens to be 57.3 degrees. Now, let's measure a second radian around this circle. So, what I have here is two radians, and I'm going to do one more real quick. So what I have here is one radian, two radians, and three radians. Now what if I wanted to find how many radians it takes to go halfway around the circle? Alright, so let's see here. You notice that there happens to be a really weird little sliver of a section right here that doesn't exactly equal a radian. Actually it's a very small part of a radian. Half the length around a circle does not necessarily end up being uh, a full, complete number of radians. It ends up being a small little sliver of a radian in that last little section. And that's the, that last little section is actually pretty important. That ends up being 0 0.14 radians, or 14% of a radian. So we could end up saying that half the length around the circle ends up being 3.14 radians. And that 3.14 ends up being a very significant and important number for us. We call that 3.14 pi. And it doesn't matter how big or how small your circle is, it's always going to be 3.14 radians to go halfway around the circle and like I said that 3.14 we call that pi. So now that we know what a radian is let's use that to figure out angular position in radians. Now like I said already the radian is the SI unit for angular position. And we've already established that half of the distance around the circle is pi. So what if I were to be, well, halfway in between my zero reference point and pi? Well, that would end up being right here. And it's halfway between zero and pi, so that would be half of a pi, or pi over two. <laughs> 
Now, once again, what if I was halfway between these two right here? What would that location be? Well, it's uh, half of pi over two because it's right in between these two. And it ends up being pi over four. What if I was in between these two? Now, since we have this broken up into fourths, this is one pi over four. This is two pi over four. It just reduces down to pi over two. This would end up being three pi over four. And this part right here would end up being four pi over four, which just leaves us as pi. And we can actually continue this process all the way around the circle. I'm gonna do that real quick. And if something were to go all the way around the circle, we see that this one right here is seven pi over four. So this would end up being eight pi over four. Eight divided by four gives us two. So this is either zero radians or two pi. And two pi is if it goes all the way around and stops right here. So that's how you can use radians to figure out the position of something around the circle. Now you need to understand how to use the radians to make sure that you can do all of our physics equations correctly later on. So now that we know angular position, let's now talk about angular displacement. Now, like I said earlier, angular displacement is just the change in angular position. So it's just how much has that angular position changed as I, as I have drawn over here. Now the equation to find the change in angular position is very similar to things that we've already learned. So the change in angular position is the final angular position minus the initial angular position. Now that's very similar to the other ways that we found the change of position um, if we're talking about x or y directions. So it's nothing crazy or tricky. It's just um, knowing where the final position is, what the initial position is, and that tells you the angular displacement. So let's try a problem with this. All right, so the problem here is that a car tire completes a half rotation. What is the angular displacement? So here we are, we have our car tire, and it does half of a rotation. So that means that if we have uh, this right here as our car tire, and it rolls and does half of a rotation, what would that angular displacement be? Now we know that half of the distance around the circle is pi, from our talk about radians earlier. So the change in angular position would just end up being pi. Now let's ask, now let's ask another question. What if it completed three fourths of a rotation? From our talk earlier on radians, we could assume that this part of the wheel would be our reference point, our zero point. And uh, it went three-fourths around, so it would end up being right here, down here. So this would end up being pi over two, two pi over two over here, and then three pi over two down here at the bottom. So figuring out the angular displacement can sometimes be pretty simple as long as you understand how radians work. Now we need to figure out how we can take angular displacement and use that to figure out linear motion. So what we have here is a circle and we are saying that it rolled half of a rotation. Okay, that's what this little line is here representing. Now just as a reminder, we need to write down a few things. We know that one radian is equal to the radius of the circle. We also know that half of the circle is 3.5 radiuses. 3.14, sorry. So we could say that this right here in this particular situation would be pi times the radius. 
Now let's give this distance a name. Let's call it S. So this entire distance is S or it's pi times the radius. Now, what is pi in this equation? Well, yeah, it's 3.14, but what if it wasn't a half circle? What if it was a quarter circle? What if it was an eighth of a circle? What if it was 72% uh, of this circle? Um, what would that be? Well, in this case, really, pi is the change in angular position. So I can use this information that I have here to create a formula. Like so, where S represents how far the object would have rolled, where the delta theta is how far around the circle it's moved, and R being the radius. This equation actually has a name to it, and we call it the arc length formula. And this arc length formula can end up being pretty useful in certain situations. So here we have a problem where a car tire has a radius of 0.3 meters. Here's our car tire. It's got a radius of 0.3 meters. It rolls two complete rotations down a road. How far did the tire roll? Well, let's first start off talking about everything that we know. The first thing that we know is the radius of the tire. 0 0.3 meters. We also know that it does two complete rotations. Now, a half of a rotation is pi, a full rotation is 2 pi. So if it does two complete rotations, that would end up being a delta theta of 4 pi, a change in angular position of 4 pi. And like I said, we got that from the two complete rotations. Now, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find how far did the tire roll. So if it started here, and it ended up here, how far is that? We'll call that S. So what we're looking for is S. So in this case, we can use our arc length formula and say S equals... And we can just plug our numbers in and solve. And that is how we can take all of our angular position and angular displacement and use it to find some sort of linear properties of something moving.